This video is an original ethnography based on exploratory research and made possible through the skills and knowledge learned in the Evergreen State College MPA program. This video shows the absence and presence of caring processes identified during a literature review done in the winter quarter of 2010. As you view this video, we ask that you think critically about what you're seeing and imagine new possibilities of a world engaged in caring processes. Thank you for your collaboration. After Hurricane Katrina's violent landfall in August 2005, the world witnessed the sad aftermath of the storm. In Louisiana alone, over 1,500 people were killed, 200,000 homes were destroyed, and 80% of New Orleans was underwater. Because the government failed to respond in a timely way, there were public outcries that they did not care about the disenfranchised. In a survey of 680 Katrina evacuees, 61% said the government does not care about people like them. There's a growing body of research on how caring and caring ethics can be used to frame and solve complex moral and societal issues. Joan Toronto, a leading care ethics scholar, writes, Care's absence from our core social and political values reflects many choices our society has made about what to honor. So let's look at the presence or absence of care since Hurricane Katrina in the community of St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana, a community that suffered 100% devastation. Katrina's wrath left all 67,000 residents without homes, jobs, or possessions. To put the flooding into perspective, the Mississippi River levees were 16 feet high, while the wall of water that took aim at the community was over 30 feet high. But just imagine you, just sit up on your roof one day, just by half an hour in the middle of the sunshine, in the middle of the summer, just a, ha a half an hour and feel the heat, and then magnify that times four days. No water, no food. No hope. Towards the end, no hope. Just imagine that. And that's what we went through. And it didn't take but a half an hour to wreck our lives. A half an hour, we were done. But some of us just couldn't leave. And they paid the ultimate price because they gave their lives up because they couldn't leave. And that's what hurts. That's what hurts the most. That human beings had to give their lives up because our government let that happen. It's a damn shame. You know, the story, and I came back, when I came back six months after, oh, God, I just couldn't take it. What did you find? Nothing. I just, it brought me back that Saturday. We left that Saturday night. <laughs> for that because I didn't have any insurance or anything when the flood hit I had nothing and uh, I was living in a trailer and my house was just gutted that's all I didn't have anything else done to it so my name is Liz McCartney I'm one of the co-founders of the St. Bernard Project and I came down in February of 2006 to St. Bernard Parish with the goal of volunteering for a couple weeks with Zach Rosenberg, who was my boyfriend, and my mom, who had just retired. And when we got here, <clears throat> we were really surprised by the amount of devastation, and even more surprised to meet people who are a lot like our own family, you know, who before the storm owned a house, they were gainfully employed, they paid their taxes, and yet six months after Hurricane Katrina, they were lucky if they had a FEMA trailer. And they were living in their cars in the second story of their homes, and people just had no idea how they were going to get back to this place that they loved so much, where they had raised their families and they had huge networks of friends and family and colleagues. And more than anything, they just wanted to come home. So we decided to move down to New Orleans from our home in Washington, D.C. and start this thing called the St. Bernard Project. And when it was time to go, I just down to New Orleans. 
Residents encountered many barriers in their efforts to rebuild. Many homeowners had canceled their flood insurance based on notification that they no longer lived in a floodplain. This left them to rely on government funds that were slow to arrive. Two years after the hurricane, many report receiving no money at all. When money did arrive, numerous homeowners were so far behind on their mortgages that all their money went to catch up with the bank. This left the physical and financial burden of rebuilding to individuals and neighbors. Because of the decrease in available housing and the demand for rental housing, rents increased by as much as three to four times the norm, and most renters received little aid from the government. The tremendous demand for help in rebuilding attracted many dishonest contractors and investors. Work that was paid for was left undone or was substandard. Looting was rampant. Building materials and appliances would disappear overnight. And they took out a section of, of the board to see if, if, if I had it, and they found out that I mean, got it. They couldn't so, from yeah, China. So all of this was just yeah. finished, just like this. This is nice as this. It all had to come out. Oh. And that's when you all came in. And uh, same with our project came in. Mr. Zach came over. He came in and he walked around for a few seconds. He said, is, is it all right to go? I said, yeah, sure. He went and walked around. He said, we can do this. We can do this. Do this. That's great. <laughs> yeah, you know. So he picked up where the other ones left off. Uh, my wife and I began just gutting the house and throwing out uh, the debris that was left. And uh, of course, we weren't making very much progress. But when Save and Art Project came aboard, things moved along very, very rapidly. We thank God every day for Liz and Zach. They, they just, they've just uh, been so supportive, uh, so well organized. Uh, and, and in, in so many different ways. I mean, they're willing to get in there with a hammer or a screwdriver as well as uh, uh, doing sheetrock and that other thing. But they're, they're, they're organizers. And I think that's been the, the biggest part of their uh, contribution. They've just solicited help and received it from so many different individuals, groups, agencies, and so, what have you. And uh, I, I, I think they're they're never satisfied. I think they just keep at it and they constantly seek more help. And they're doing that right now. I would feel that had it not been for St. Art Project, we probably would have given up. I don't know that we could have gotten back on our own. And so that's meant an awful lot to us. Uh, and of course we've developed a lot of friends and, and uh, really, really made, established some good relationships with other people in St. Art Project. And, and I really feel, you know, to me, it's really restored my faith in, in society and in, in, in my fellow man. I think that particularly seeing so many young people taking part, but not just young people, people of all ages, races, uh, have come together and really done a great job and are still doing so and probably will continue to do for so for quite some time. I just started building a house back out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And then one day this gentleman called me up and says he wants to come by my house to see the inside of my house. He's coming to help me. And oh, hope we met a lot of wonderful people, a lot of great people. We really have people we will never forget, never forget. Um, put back a lot of hope. This man, he had, he had lost his hope along with the storm. I lost my faith. He lost his faith. He lost everything, but it brought it back to him. You have a That's sign a outside part. that says keep the faith. That sign, we had that sign here in front of the house before Katrina. And it, it became an icon became an because icon. everybody that would pass the house would stop and see this little sign that says keep the faith. We have people like St. Bernard Project. St. Bernard Project is making sure That's that the God people are taken care of. They're putting love. They're putting, they're putting, putting love in St. Bernard. They're putting hope That's and love That's my motto right there. Back. They're putting love because they gave us love again, even though we never lost our love for I us. I show that. We never did but lose it gives us our love in our heart. It actually made us stronger in our marriage. And it's let us life. know that there are people out there that care about us and not about how much money we made. How much we made, how much they can make. How much. And we just want to let the people in Washington State know that we are coming back. 
And a lot of us are coming back with help, especially help from the people from projects, I mean, St. Bernard Project, and small organizations and volunteers. Oh. Volunteers that did more for us in this parish than our government. Our government, hope I don't go fishing. <laughs> our government has. And to take their vacation and come here to help us when all of this is going on at this school, you know, mm. I said, you know. You got to be loved somewhere. <laughs>